hi guys what's up how are you and i'm going to start this video with a simple request kindly subscribe it's a tiny channel and if i uh, add any value to you guys then just subscribe it's free now let me start with the video you know z30 is an interesting camera if it ever comes out why is it interesting because it somewhat is going to be replacing the d5600 from nikon which has been a very successful camera one of the most selling camera from the Nikon stable, but not only from Nikon, from all brands. It's one of the highest selling cameras. Even last year, in 2022, uh, Nikon D5600 sold uh, in really high numbers. So uh, what was the purpose of Nikon D5600? It was essentially quite decent, well-connected, easy to use, nice uh, with nice ergonomics and nice buttons. It was a camera that people sort of uh, began their photography journey with. A lot of people who wanted to get into DSLRs, they looked at the Nikon D3500 and the 5600 or 5500. So these cameras so serve sort of that purpose that, you know, this is one thing that you pick up first, start learning photography or videography, you start your creative journey there. And then as you, as you sort of pick up the nuances of photography and you understand I need to go in this direction or that direction, uh, you understand what you want from your camera more. With. So, so this sort of is an experience builder. So for Nikon, uh, strategically speaking, from a portfolio point of view, for a brand like Nikon, the entry level uh, DSLRs is to sort of bring people into the F mount and people is to then upgrade within the F because once you're in the F mount, you will probably buy some good F mount lenses. And once you have nice F mount lenses, you probably just upgrade the body. So you're sort of uh, now in the system but from consumers point of view uh, it's going to be something that you pick up first you try and test you sort of graduate from your mobile phone up to a entry level um, DSLR now mirrorless camera so understand what a consumer is looking from uh, uh, from a Z30 or a D5600 they're looking for a clear difference in the experience of shooting from their mobile phone the difference has to be significant enough for someone to keep thinking that you know a camera is better than a phone which it is so it has to also sort of remember the consumer who's upgrading my phone someone who's used to you know a touch screen someone who's used to sort of looking at the world through a large sort of screen like this and shooting using the touch screen as a as the major interface now we have been hearing about z34 quite a while now but uh, we do not yet know exactly how it is going to be. Therefore, I'm just going to uh, talk about a few things I think the camera should have for people to enjoy the mirrorless experience, a real camera experience, so to say, and, and for them to keep investing in a camera system, uh, in Nikon in this case. But also from Nikon's point of view, this camera should serve as a you know tiny but a definite nudge towards continuous upgrade you know Nikon would like someone to um, upgrade from the Z30 to Z50 or Z5 maybe tomorrow Z6 a few primes maybe you know a couple of years later a nice professional zoom I mean you know for the people who are really serious about it but that's the kind of upgrade part that Nikon would like uh, to open up in front of the consumer and and so and that's how we recruit into the system so what should this camera have to be meaningful at this juncture let's look at a few things that i think should be there in the camera fundamentally it should introduce people to the mirrorless world the mirrorless camera experience and look the mirrorless camera experience truly mm, doesn't exist without an electronic viewfinder and the whole experience of holding the camera in front of your eyes and shooting it's a different it's a different how do i say it like you know like how people go out and when they smoke they there's a ritual related to the whole aspect of, like you know when people go out and smoke there's this ritual uh around there are a lot of rituals around smoking and those rituals are as much a part of smoking as a pleasure from from smoking itself so the way you hold your cigarette maybe the way you sort of draw patterns with the smoke i think similarly holding the camera up in front of your eyes that is the sort of um 
that's very integral that whole ritual is integral to photography or using a real camera so i think evf has to be there for someone to be able to fall in love with a camera in future now apart from the evf the one key thing that's going to be necessary in this segment is going to be a nice screen and it has to be a flip out screen nice touch screen you should have uh, easy connectivity with phones the consumer should find it extremely easy to transfer sort of um, you know files from the camera to the phone uh, it should be easy to connect to the wi-fi um, i think even if, if it comes with you know auto publishing if, if the camera has ability to sort of upload photos directly to instagram and facebook or other mediums um, directly from the camera that would be a very nice touch because that's very going to be very relevant for millennials who are used to using a phone the other thing that's i think is very important is is how whether you're able to sort of operate the camera from your phone directly at times you probably want to for example if you want uh, self portraits you know a better easier way of shooting self portrait from your phone and operate the camera could be a nice touch so these are the few basic things that i would i, I thought is going to be important now there are other fundamental things that we go through them for example what now there are about 10 to 12 other things that i expect this camera to have it's definitely going to have that great nikon color it's going to have the really high quality nikon file so that both maybe jpeg fine and also um high grade raw files that nikon always produces excellent low light performance that nikon is known for now that they have done a better job with z62 and z72 in term uh, in low light focusing i think that should also uh, sort of trickle down to the z 30 and i expect it to perform even better than the z62 and z72 because they have had about 6 to 8 months more to use and develop the technology so i think it should w- work very well in low light should have very good iso performance very nice nikon ergonomics the body the chassis the uh, the, the handling the grip all of those things i expect it to do very well and just be as good as the Z50 or the Z5 or the Z6 now i think the i auto focus in this is going to be improved but apart from that i think it's going to also have animal i auto focus edge to edge a point auto focus points probably a higher coverage than the current coverage on Z50 and uh, Z6 i think it should have about 100% i think it should come close to covering the entire frame with auto focus points and um i expect it to a 24 megapixel camera not a 20 megapixel camera like the um like the Z50 because uh, i think for people who are upgrading to uh, let's say 12 megapixel or 16 megapixel decent uh mobile phone they would want 24 they would respect 24 megapixels and 20 megapixels certainly for that audience 20 megapixel seems a little a little bit too less suddenly for that audience 20 megapixel seems a little bit too less so i think 24 megapixel is going to be the right sort of uh, amount of megapixel for that segment also also did i talk about flip out screen i think it's going to be very important to have a flip out screen in this segment people this segment young consumers they would like to sort of vlog they would like to go out and shoot themselves and i think it just should open up and be more flexible so therefore you know um, having that flip out screen a uh, screen is just adds to the uh, perceptual uh, flexibility of the camera and i think that's that nikon should definitely add a flip out screen in the z30 if not in any other camera it is a must in the z30 i do not think that it's going to have in body image stabilization but without that except for the ibis i think it's essentially um, uh, an xs10 from fuji but maybe half the price I think that's the that's the uh, sweet spot. I think Nikon can hit the Z30. The same great file from Z50, um, same great ergonomics, but but much cheaper than the XS10, and probably about 150 to 200 dollars cheaper than the Z50. I think it should definitely have 4K 24 and 4K 30 without crop. Maybe 4K 30 might have a slight crop, but 4K 24 must be there. full auto focus and, and and auto iso um capability so yeah so these thing basic things but i think you know the one more important thing that i think nikon should 
offer as option for to this segment is the kit choice as in you definitely it's going to come with that 18 to 55 or so um of a kit lens but i think what should be offered as kit are also the upcoming pancake lenses the 28 uh, mm lens and the 40 mm lens that is going to be introduced pretty soon a 28 mm lens on a crop sensor body is going to be about 40 mm a 40 mm lens on a crop sensor body is going to be about 60 mm so i think those could be paired beautifully with this tiny small body um it's going to be great for street photography for travel shoots for studio shoot uh, for portrait casual portrait photography really really good stuff uh, so i think nikon should offer that option those lens option lenses those lenses as kit options um apart from that i also do think that the 35 mm 1.8 s line lens should be offered as a kit along with this z body because you know what it does suddenly it, what it does is it, it, it introduces says the consumer to the best one of the best lenses in the system so i think that would be a nice strategic thing to do i think the lenses are going to be very important the way they pair it as a kit but i think the z30 is not going to have a few things a few things that the d5600 lacked and i think that is that those features are not going to be there first because of the cost but also because uh those are reasons for you to upgrade your body those are reasons for you to sort of spend a little bit more pay the premium and buy a better body in future so what are those five six things that i think is not going to be there in the camera firstly i think this camera is not going to be weather sealed so far all the z cameras have been weather sealed i doubt that the z30 is going to be weather sealed though all nikon cameras are very well built this may not be completely uh, a magnesium alloy made body uh, you know typically uh, if you look at all these cameras they're all magnesium alloy chassis and magnesium alloy body ex ex except for the z5 which has the top and the bottom panel are not made of magnesium alloy but apart from that all of these products are made with magnesium alloy and i think z30 nikon probably won't be able to afford um that uh, level of sort of construction material for the z30 but it's going to be pretty decent going by Nikon standards. I don't think it's going to have one eight thousandth um, shutter speed. I think it's going to have the highest shutter speed is going to be one four thousand, uh, like the Z50, definitely. So, so uh, maybe that becomes a reason for people to sort of move up the ladder later on and get a better camera. I mean, a more equipped camera like a Z5, for example. I don't think it's going to come with a lot of function buttons. I think on that respect, it's going to be pretty scant. I don't see it uh, having a lot of tactile function buttons. I think it's going to have the bare minimum, but not a lot of function uh, extra buttons that you see on professional bodies. Although I said that it should come with 4K30, it might actually skip 4K30 and just keep it to 4K24. And it will definitely not come with 4K60, which is slowly becoming sort of a standard um, nowadays, uh, higher frame rate focus. So I think if you don't have that, a lot of people find it reason now to sort of upgrade later on. So that's it, guys. I think it's going to be priced around 650 or so, uh, maybe maximum 700 US dollars. And I think that would be a good price for this body. Uh, so that's about it. Share what you think. Please write in the comments below what you expect from the Z30. And please subscribe. See you around.